Welcome to this edition of Nautical Know How How to Buy a Boat with Your Partner On Board with the Plan. Buying a boat is all in all a pretty complicated and challenging endeavour in many ways. It's an up and down emotional ride through the five distinct stages of buying a boat. And one of the joys of boat ownership is the sharing of experiences, those priceless boating experiences, creating memories of a lifetime, and sharing those with family, friends, and loved ones. So having your partner on board is definitely high on the list of priorities for many people. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you some tips on what you can do to get your partner on board and the exact steps to take in aligning your and your partner's goals and objectives along the way. Sound good? Okay, my name is Dion Schick and I'm the co-founder of Basco. Along with my hubby William, we're an independent and boutique boat advisory firm based in Singapore and working globally. We provide independent and trusted advice that takes risk and uncertainty out of boat ownership. Now how do we do that? We do that by having no boat dealerships or agencies. We don't have any inventory and no, bro no brokerage. We do work with two to three boat owners every month to help them sell their boats faster with our three-stage online sales and marketing system. And we also work with new boaters and boat searchers to gain complete confidence in a boating lifestyle decision without the complicated stress and uncertainty of boat dealers and boat brokers. So let's kick off our how to buy a boat with your partner on board with a real life case study that happened just recently and it was told by a boat broker. So it went a bit like this. Help, domestic anchor problem, he goes on to say. The husband's been looking for a boat for more than a year. It's his first real boat, it's more than 50 feet, it's perfect, he loves it and it's a fantastic deal. But the wife has said, no way, he's not having a boat and I'm not moving from that position. Now you may have heard this before, quite difficult and what to do. Then our social media committee weighs in on the debate and provides a limited range of options, but by far the most popular is finding a new wife. But seriously, if you think about it, it's not only a pretty common scenario, but it's also one that's an awful position to be in for all the parties that are involved. And the point of this short video is so that you never find yourself in this position because you can imagine what it would be like. The husband would be super excited, thrilled, pumped, and yet there's this trepidation in the back of his mind and then wham, hugely let down, no doubt angry, bitterly disappointed. The wife may be incensed, she might be angry, terrified of what might happen or what she fears is about to happen. She could be scared of the family finances or safety not a happy household, and this isn't something that's gonna go away that quickly. Then there's the boat dealer. He's beside himself, tearing his hair out, seeing his deal and commission going south. Now the social media experts are weighing back in again with their good advice, saying mostly and unhelpfully, divorce the wife, leave her behind. With a nice boat like that, you'll easily find another one, and variations on that theme. A few more helpful people say things like, Take them out on the water, convince her of the lifestyle, get some drink into them, take the contract along. And I'd imagine that this is exactly what the wife is terrified of. Another sen sensible suggestion is to find out her real needs and concerns. But if all else fails, the suggestion invariably goes back to the new wife theme. Another person offers the idea of them buying a boat that she's more comfortable with, perhaps a smaller boat. While all the comments are mostly lighthearted and said in jest, there is still a serious undertone and implication, and they're all in a position that none of us would enjoy very, very much, no matter who we were in this case study. So how do we avoid being in this position? Or how do we convince the wife so that the husband gets what he so desperately wants? Now it's easy to say with hindsight, don't let yourself get into this situation in the first place. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how you can do this. Avoid getting yourself into the situation in the first place. Okay, let's dig right into this. So avoiding getting into this sticky situation is part of nautical know-how. Understanding the traps and tricks on the journey to boat ownership without high stress or costly mistakes. Now there are six stages that a new boater goes through on the journey to boat ownership. The first stage may take 
years or decades and many people may never move from this first stage. That's okay. Convincing her isn't really going to be the best strategy though and neither is hoodwinking her with drink. The wife in this situation may well be in stage one. On the other hand, the husband is clearly well past the first stage and in fact he has moved all the way to stage five over the last year. And for various reasons that we don't know, the wife has been left behind and the result is telling. There's conflict, unhappiness, fighting, anger, accusations, gosh, even potential divorce. You can imagine what it would be like, a terrible situation to be in and to have created. So if you want to avoid this, here's a simple idea. And this is what we call the Boat Searcher's Blueprint to a Boating Lifestyle. This is a tool that we use to help clients get, have a clear path to get from point A to point B on their boating journey, whether they're going to buy a boat or whether they're not going to buy a boat, whatever the decision might be. Now there are three simple stages to complete confidence in a lifestyle de decision and to create those family lasting memories and those experiences without the stress and uncertainty of brokers and dealers. Now stage one is moving from deciding to start, um, from being wanting and stuck at the dock side to getting underway with options and having clear options. Stage two is understanding how the industry works and getting the full and complete picture and that includes cost wise as well. And stage three, uh, is discovering the lifestyle and making it happen and this includes savvy negotiating and effective shortlisting. Now step one is nautical know-how and this video is part of this first step understanding what you need to do to avoid risking family finances and safety at sea. So step two is chart your goals and this is the dreams and objective stage so you can move from doubting that you can do this to clarity. This is where working with your partner uh, sits within the blueprint to a boating lifestyle. So let me show you what's inside module two and step two. Let's drill down into some of the detail of module two and how this relates to getting your partner on board with your plan. So let's take a look now. Here's step two. We call it Navigation 101. It's charting your goals and dreams, including your partner's goals. And within this chart here, there are three simple steps for you to start to get your partner on board with your plans and goals. Step one is understanding who you are boating wise. What does this mean? It means what type of boater you are. And yes, there are six different types of boaters. Those are new boaters, that is. So take the time to see which one of these six you are and understand what type of boater your partner would be if they were going to be a boater. So that's the first step. The next step is then to recognise why this matters. So why is it important that you and your partner might be different types of boaters and understanding what sort of boater you are. So step number two is understanding where you're at on the boating journey and where your partner is at on the journey as well. So there are six stages to, the, to boat ownership. So once you've identified where you're at, then it's time to identify where your partner's at on that boating journey. Once you've done that, then once again, understand the critical impact on your goals and your partner's dreams and goals as well, if you're at different stages of the journey. The third step is to understand the differences between the stage that you're both at on the boating journey and the different types of new boaters that you might be and how to align these differences. So that third step is to understand what the implications are. And once you understand the implications, you'll be on track to successfully navigating the challenges in the next stage of the boating journey. And here you can see the remaining steps to charting your goals and objectives with your spouse or your partner on the journey to the boating lifestyle. And in this step, you move from doubt to clarity and you become sure and clear how you might be able to make a decision. 
So as you can see, there are some straightforward steps to take with your partner to help with goal setting and getting on track together. Now, while all this might sound simple, and of course it is, but it's often not easy. But it is a lot easier to do this at the beginning of the journey than to have to deal with the fallout like we've seen in the case study. And then you find yourself going around and around in frustrating circles with no end in sight. You can do it the hard way, like our husband and wife in the example, or you can do it the easy way. But if you want to find out more about how the steps in our Navigation 101 roadmap might apply to you and your situation, book a call or drop us an email because we'd be really happy to have a quick call with you. Because if you want to get crystal clear on the exact two to three steps that you should be taking right now to get on your boating journey or to get your journey on track, then feel free to book a call with us. Let us spend a few minutes on a boating strategy call with you. But there's no pressure at all because while we can't and we don't work with everyone, we'd be really happy to get on a call and help you get crystal clear on those next couple of steps and the action you should be taking right now. So book the call below. But in the meantime, if you have any tips to share or if you've got any feedback, do let me know and we'll share them with the boat broker who's working with the husband at the moment because he probably needs all the help that he can get. Talk to you soon.